Hello, good afternoon or good morning everyone. Welcome again to Pagasa Center. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, for those who are new, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Gosh Ambat. I'm one of the primaries of uh, Pastor Doc and Pastor Shay. And uh, we welcome you this morning or afternoon or some maybe evening in the Philippines. So of course, uh, before I start, I also want to give uh, my appreciation and my honor to Pastor Doc and Pastor Ache for allowing me once again to be of use and of course it's always an honor to be here so you know I'm still uh, nervous every time I was messaging my wife said pray for me because I haven't been <laughs> doing this for a while and yeah my heart is uh, pounding I drank too much coffee but anyway so today I was tasked to talk about uh, one of the values of the church and as a G12 church, this is uh, one thing that they are teaching us now to have this uh, servant values, okay? Meaning that, that we serve people through servant leadership, okay? The theme of uh, G12 this year is all about fruitfulness, okay? Tell the person next to you or say fruitfulness, yeah? And in order for us to be fruitful, we need to sharpen and be on point in our Christian values. Uh, Pastor Doc and Pastor Shea, they have been teaching us for the last week or few weeks, months, about Christian values, okay? And last week, Pastor Doc uh, preached about the fruitfulness, okay? And he mentioned three C's, if you remember, they are character, conduct, and convert, okay? That's why one of our must have values now as a church and as a disciple of Jesus Christ is to serve okay one of the reason why intentional disciple church grow okay these churches they grow because of the ability to serve people through servant leadership amen and uh, we thank God that Pagasa Center is a church that serves amen so you know, our Pastor Doc is uh, one of our model and example that, you know, a model that serves. Because uh, even our mentors, they are teaching us that even with or without pandemic, we should be serving others. We should be actively winning souls and making disciples. <coughs> Amen? But recently, okay, there are symptoms that are surfacing and developing in every homes and in every churches okay and that problem uh, happened because of the pandemic so whether we like it or not this pandemic has created a problem to many people okay and we have discovered and this problem is what we call couch potatoes okay say couch potatoes okay Miriam uh, Miriam Webster defines a couch potato as a person disinclined to activity or exertion. Okay, in other words, couch potato is one who spends a great deal of time watching television, or you know they watch sports after sports, series after series, anime after anime. <laughs> okay playing video games all day or in their consoles or in their mobile devices and etc okay even uh, in one t tv show that we are watching is called the uh, chicago fire okay they even called someone in that fire department mouch because he was a fireman but he he, he is basically a man and half man and half couch so mouch okay so there was a study conducted on couch potatoes back in 1982 okay one of these things that they have discovered around the 80s and 90s that couch potatoes contributed to the uh, one of the highest heart disease in america okay maybe it also contributed to a lot of deaths in the 20s and people who are like couch potatoes they have very high risk of having a heart disease and heart issues in their lives okay so not just uh, having heart diseases at an all-time high 
your cholesterol is also up okay and your when you are when you are uh, you, are, you have heart disease you have high cholesterol your productivity level will be down amen so in other words inactivity or unproductiveness can contribute to high level of heart disease and cholesterol okay of course there are other factors uh, to having heart diseases but let's just focus to the inactivity or lifestyle I had to confirm this uh, findings with uh, one of my former disciple he works in the hospital and he specializes in heart okay I don't know what's he called but his name is badge by the way uh, if you are here badge please comment down below <laughs> okay and you know he specializes in heart and I had to confirm it what causes heart diseases and etc so yeah he did say inactivity is one of it uh, etc but you know badges heart problem has nothing to do with heart disease okay he just needs a lover or someone that will look after his heart that's your shout out bro but anyway <laughs> I hear it all the time uh, because my dad is a doctor, used to be a doctor, he still is but not practicing, yeah? I hear it all the time when someone will come and consult him uh, with chest pain regarding like their chest or their heart, he will always ask these questions. He say, do you have a history of heart disease or do you have, uh, oh, what do you do for a living, okay? Do you exercise? Do you eat healthy and many more because again usually one of the factors that contributes to heart health is activity okay and what contributes to heart disease is inactivity so there might be something in your life right now whether it is emotional physical financial or spiritual diseases whatever it is because maybe you are not active enough in these areas okay what do I mean you are not active in generosity okay don't look at the person next to you you check yourself you're not active in caring others you're not active in loving others you're not actively serving in the kingdom of God the reason why you see many things in the church the reason why you see many problems with people is because you are not active enough in serving amen so you see many things you see the problem of your leader you see the problem of your pastor you see the problem of the church you see the problem of the light you see the problem of the noise etc yeah because you are not active in serving all right when you're engaged into serving you won't even have time to gossip you won't even have time to complain you don't you won't even have time to more more amen this is why in this pandemic that happened it gave us something it gave a lot of people something okay a, a maybe a system of inactivity okay this is why we have COVID weights around our uh, <laughs> bellies and our necks yeah couch potatoes are not active and their productivity level is very low okay but today of course we will not talk about couch potatoes today i want you to take note of a similar problem that may be occurring now or probably occurring already within the churches today okay and that problem is that what we call church potatoes okay tell the person next to you church potatoes, <coughs> church potatoes. so a church potato is a so-called Christian okay who makes his way into the church whether it's digital or physical to sit and watch what's going on while snacking on Christianity or religion okay the church potatoes are disinclined to kingdom work activity and to the mission of Jesus Christ for many uh, Christianity is just a sp spectator sport okay they come and watch what's going on and never involve themselves in working in the kingdom of God 
Because let's be honest, serving others or serving in the church may not be fun for them. Okay? Because they have not yet discovered the joy of serving the Lord. They have not yet discovered that when you serve and obey God, there is inevitable blessings, honor, and promotion attached to your obedience and service to God. So, it's hard to put ourselves out there and serve others, especially, uh, again, when we're talking about the physical gathering, okay? Uh, I used to have a lot of disciples that I tell them to serve. And the first area that I will tell them to serve is in set up and pack up ministry, okay? Because it's my main ministry. It's like my job. This, this is what we love. We love to serve behind the scenes. And I want them to experience that. I want them to have that same uh, desire to serve in the littlest or the smallest thing in what we do, okay? Then there is Sunday school teachers. There is Sunday school assistant. There is media. There is music, you know, uh, picking up rubbish on the floor, okay? Ushering ministry. And then when COVID happened, when pandemic happened, we had... Uh, the benevolence ministry, we go grocery, we cook, and we deliver food to others. And most of the time, it's not always fun, okay? Because you are sacrificing your time, you are sacrificing your effort, your money, your strength, and many more, okay? And just like the couch potatoes, okay, sooner or later, they will start suffering from bad health, okay? Which can develop a spiritual callousness in their heart the body of Christ suffers okay and will become ill if we allow ourselves to be church potatoes okay look whatever we allow whatever we allow it will become the culture and that culture will dominate and of course we don't want church potatoes to dominate Pagasa Center amen or whatever church you come from you don't want church potatoes to dominate. You want people who loves to serve others even though they themselves are going through something in life. Okay? It's not about you, but it's about others. Amen? So, look at this. How do you know you've become a church potato? Uh, <laughs> or what are the symptoms of having a church potato? Okay? Again, there are many... Uh, Examples that you can think of, but this is what I will give you. Number one is familiarity. Say familiarity. We know that familiarity is the most destructive way to destroy unity. Why? Because if everybody serves and you are not serving, you are not united to the body. Okay? You're not united with the body. You have this mindset of, I know that already. I have heard that before. And they always say they don't feel they have anything to offer anymore. You know, they say that the position available for service does not fit my gifts. Okay. And maybe some of them, they couldn't care less. Okay. Basically, they are safe, satisfied, and seated Christians. All right. Next is neutrality. And again, one of the most dangerous form of rebellion. They say work of the ministry is to be done by professional workers only the full-time workers or the pastors and we know that's not the case okay they say that it's not my job uh you know they say that it's always uh for example there is something that they can see and that they can do it and they don't want to do it they will say hey you do this this is your job yeah so it's one of those and then it says that you're not the enemy, but you're not also the ally. Imagine, looks like you are in the church, but not part of the church. You're in the church, but not reliable. Okay? So, if you are experiencing these symptoms, be careful. And then next is normalcy. Okay? Normalcy is the condition of being typical, as expected. Many people will say, I'm too old. Just because you're old doesn't mean you cannot serve. Look at Pastor Doc. That's, a, that's why I said example, okay? I'm too young. Just because you're young, that doesn't mean you cannot serve. 
Or some people will say, to offer my service would be prideful because I'm a CEO. I'm a manager. I'm a this one. I'm the boss. I'm like, I'm like this, etc., etc. You no longer, or some people, they no longer aim for excellence. Okay? Basta-basta uh, na lang. That's why I remember Pastor Doc translating basta-basta na lang, just-just. Okay? Yeah. They are just ordinary and not or extraordinary. The most dangerous place to be when you conform to the normality of this world is this. When you have that mindset of the world. Mindset that if you have a position, you don't need to serve. It's not your job. It's not your place. You don't feel like there is a need. But instead, you want to be served. But not in the kingdom of God. We know that the higher position you have, the more you are ought to serve. Amen? So, I also have some digitally symptoms. Okay? So, you think you can get away with this, yeah? Now, in digital, look at this. What are the symptoms? Familiarity, neutrality, normalcy is still there, but... You're late on a digital service is a sign of church potato. It's already digital, my friend, and you're still late. Okay, don't tag them. We know them. We see them coming on. So don't worry. Yeah. And here, when you become church potato in digital platform, you don't tag and share the link anymore because it has become familiar to you. It become just a normal thing for you. Okay. You don't attend evangelistic anymore. You don't even invite in evangelistic anymore. The normal people that we see are probably the primaries, the cell leaders, and etc. There are new people. Okay? You don't attend Bible study anymore. If there was Bible study, you just turn it on and then go do whatever you need to do so that you just said that you were there. But in reality, nothing came in. Yeah? You don't do prayer nights. You say you do, but when we ask you, when there's your, your fruit, there's nothing, yeah? Or people will say, they overslept, okay? They will just watch replay. Hello, are you still here? You can't even get change for Sunday service anymore. <laughs> this is the funny one. You can't even turn on your Zoom video for meeting and mentoring. Hey! You, my friend, have become a church potato. So, maybe you guys are being quiet now. Yeah? And if this is you, you type in the comment, you say, ouch. Okay? So, I'm using these examples because I believe that God is preparing us now to go back into physical gathering. And if we are carrying this church potato and couch potato syndrome when we go out there we will not be able to do more because our productivity level will be down okay so we need to start now we need to start the ball rolling we need to get started getting out of our comfort zones once again okay start actively serving god in whatever you can or in whatever way you can okay collectively when we do this we will fulfill the god-given assignments in our lives okay and there are some excellent reasons uh, why we should always fight this church potato syndrome that is developing in our lives and get ready to serve okay so in other words it's time for us to become a missionary and not a mission filled Again, following up with Pastor Doc's fruitfulness uh, message that gave us three C's. Character, conduct, and con to convert, and conversion. I will give you seven C's today. Hallelujah. Yeah? Seven C's to help us understand. And as we serve others, we will be fruitful. Okay? So are you ready? Number one, why should we serve others? Is We are created to serve amen tell the person next to you you are created to serve in ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 niv let's read it from niv first he says that for we are god's handiwork created in christ jesus to do 
good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now, in living translation, it says, It is God himself who has made us what we are and given us new lives from Christ Jesus long ago. He planned that we should spend these lives in helping others. Amen? God calls us His handiwork, His workmanship, okay? His artwork. We are something crafted with skills and purpose by God for His purpose. Specifically, we are created in Jesus Christ to do good works. Amen? But let me be clear. Good works do not give us salvation, but they are absolutely meant to be the result of salvation. The reason why so many people are miserable today, because they are feeling empty in their lives. Because they missed the point of life. Okay, The Bible says that long ago, God planned that you and I should serve others. So if you are not serving others, you are missing the plans of God in your life. Amen? And again, as I serve others, my own needs are met. And as I give my life away, I find it. Okay? So again, tell the person next to you, you are created to serve. Number two, why do we need to serve? It confirms your identity. Okay? Maybe you don't know who you are. You don't know the purpose. This is why Pastor Doc asked uh, last Sunday, what are you on earth, on on heaven, you are here for? Yeah? Is that the one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Service basically confirms your identity. It proves that you belong to Christ. Amen? Romans 7, 4 says that you are part of the body. Uh, you are part of the body of Christ. And now you belong to him. In order that we might be useful in the service of God. Okay? So, what does this mean? God counts us being so closely identified with Christ that His physical death on the cross amounts to death of our old self. Okay? That's in Romans 6.6. 6. And then Paul said repeatedly in this previous chapter that out of death with Christ, He has freed us from Slavery, meaning our freed us from our sins. Now he adds that our death with Christ was also a death to the law. And since we died in this way, our former responsibility to the law is broken and we are free to belong to someone else. Specifically, Christians now belong to Christ, the one who has been raised from the dead. And the verse ends with the statement about the point of our new identity in Christ. In other words, now we exist to bear fruit for God. The death to law and resurrection to Christ has created for us a new purpose. This is why when you have become born again, you are now identified as part of the body. Amen? You will now do things that you've never done before. Okay? That's why the following verses speaks more about truth, uh, the fruit. But God says that way that you know that you are part of the body of Christ is that you serve others. Amen? And look at this. There's two parts. You are part of the body and now you belong to Him. Okay? Why? In order that we might be useful in the service of God. Amen? So, it's the proof when, starts, when you start desiring that you like to serve, you serve others, and it's not about you anymore, then you are, it's a confirmation of your identity. That a non-serving Christian is a contradiction, and there is no such thing. Amen? Number three, why do we need to serve? It is our commitment to God. Okay? Our service is a way to serve God. God. Colossians 3 23 to 24 says whatever you do work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for men. It is the Lord you are serving. So no matter what you are doing, what are you, oh, who are you doing it for? You're doing it for the Lord. Matthew 25 40 says that 
Jesus said, what you have done for the least or the humblest, in other translation, of my brothers and sisters of mine, you have done for me. So basically, he's saying when you feed and clothe others, then you feed and clothe me. Now you don't know how to serve. Pastor Doc is uh, sending boxes to Philippines. There are spare clothes, uh, cans, or you need whatever you can give to others. You can practice serving. Maybe your service is about generosity. You can use this to give to others. Amen. But you have to be humble. You cannot advertise that you're serving. Uh, you're humble, willing to serve others. It's the same thing as service to God. Amen. And moving on, number four. We uh, number four, the four C: conviction to serve God. I serve because I owe God everything. Amen. Romans twelve one says, "Because of God's," I'm using a Good News translation, "because of God's great mercy to us," he said, "Offer yourself as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to His serving." Uh, service and pleasing to him amen the reason why i serve the lord is because of what he has done for me because of his mercy amen he had mercy to us okay he had mercy on me when i was a rebel he had mercy on me when i was in darkness he had mercy on me when i didn't know what is right and what is wrong he had mercy on our pastor doc when he was naughty Okay, he had mercy on my brother Nathan when he was also naughty. But everyone, God showed mercy to us. Amen? And I'm sure you can relate. This is why when I think of what Jesus Christ has done for me, or the sacrifice that he has made for me, what he has done on the cross, it should move you. Amen? We need to stop walking around feeling entitled. You know, because... Sometimes in the church, you feel like you are entitled, but you're entitled for special treatment. But we must walk around humbly knowing that you don't deserve anything, but yet Jesus has done everything for you and me. Amen? So there is no sacrifice that I can or we can give God that will ever compare to what Jesus has done for the cross for you and me. Whatever it is, we owe God our service. And that will be your conviction. Amen? Number five. Five C. You are capable to serve. Okay? Because I've he I heard a lot of my uh, excuse I heard a lot of excuses from my team. Okay? They said that I am not able, I don't know how to do this, I don't know, I don't know how to serve, etc. Because look at this. You are capable to serve because nothing that you do for the Lord is without value or in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, reading again in Good News, he says that, Keep busy in your work for the Lord since you know that nothing you do in the Lord's service is ever without value. Or in NIV version, it says, Whatever you do for the Lord is not in vain vain okay filipinos has this saying they say that ah, wala kwenta yan. it's like you know in english there is no value okay and if you are working in sunday school as an assistant or a shadow or whatever you are you want to involve yourself in because sometimes we see in the physical gathering the assistant are normally the ones who take the children to from the the room to the toilet okay even just doing that, if you are doing it for the Lord, it's not of without value. Amen? It is valuable in the eyes of God. So if you pick up a piece of trash on a Sunday morning because you say someone will walk in who needs to know Jesus might be turned off by this. So what you do? You pick it up. And if you do that for God, God honors that. He will see that. And that is not that is not worthless. Okay? Now just remember again, Pastor Doc, during the physical gathering, after the service, when everybody is packing up, when all the chairs are empty, you will see him go around every chair. Okay? 
Why? Because he's picking up your sweet wrappers, he's picking up your coffee or teacups or water bottles. Okay, he tied this up and he doesn't need to do that, but that's his service. He loves to do that. Even back in our old church, you will see him hoover after the service, after even if he preached. Okay, let me give you another story. Uh, I'm gonna use Brother Ash here. Brother Ash, I love you. But one time I was training one of my disciples. So it was physical gathering. I brought one of my disciples that I want uh, him to have the, the desire to serve, the sonship, you know, taking ownership of the, the whole church, whatever it is, because he doesn't know where he fits yet. So I brought him at the back and I saw a piece of paper on the floor and we sat there while the preaching was going on and I did not pick it up in, uh, intentional, intentionally because I want him to see that there is a paper there and I want him to pick it up himself okay without me saying it so anyway I sat there with him maybe five ten minutes gone 20 minutes has gone and the, the piece of paper is still on the floor and then brother Ash is just coming I don't know where he came from but he was just coming and without even looking he just went down and picked it up like that so in my head I was like no <laughs> brother Ash you ruined my plan you know I was telling him and he was like, oh, sorry, sorry. So what he did next, he went out again and he dropped leaves like <laughs> on the floor in front of us. But anyway, for me, that is what I'm talking about. Anything, however you do, as long as you do it for God, it's of value. Amen. So, you know, glory to God for Brother Ash's service. He loves to serve God. Amen. And because our pastor is a man who serves God. Okay, so if you walk, for example, again, let me give you another example. If you walk in a toilet and you see papers, paper, uh, tissue paper, whatever, some visitor may come and they might get offended. And they, that may be the reason they will say, oh, I'm not going back to church. I will not go back because the, 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 the toilets are dirty. Even though it's public, that's the thing. Eh? The mindset you will say, it's not my job to clean this. Where's Andy? Okay, so be careful. To have the church potato syndrome the Bible says whatever you do since you do it for the Lord it all counts amen so even if I go home now play with my boys uh, you know tickle them play wrestling with them it is as important as service to the Lord amen so when you do something for your family as long as you do it for the Lord it is of value so whether you are taking the trash out, washing the dishes, ironing, cooking, etc. But if you do it for the Lord, it's of value. Because it all counts in God's eyes. It's not so much that what you do, it's your heart and how you do it. Okay. In other words, how is your attitude, uh, your attitude towards it? Okay. So there's no insignificant service in God's eyes. Let me repeat. There is no insignificant service in God's eyes. Okay? The Bible says that nothing you do in the Lord's service is ever without value. You are capable to serve and they are not in vain. Amen? So, as you minister to others, God begins to use others to minister to you. You know, if I did not believe uh, and I did not see that something that my dad and my mom were doing when the church just opened when i did not see lives being changed when i didn't see you know the need of serving others i probably you know won't be able to continue what we are doing now but because i have seen it okay this is why you know we heard so many times come and see when you see it for yourself when you actually see the change that you are doing for others it will change you and that will lead me to the next message uh, next C okay but again the fact is what counts is giving your life away all the way say all the way not just when it's fitting not just when uh, you're in comfort but even in this comfort you serve all the way amen again that's why Jesus said whoever wants to find his life will first lose it for my sake and again this leads me to my next point serving others changes you okay it changes you before i'm not like this 
Yeah? Because it makes life meaningful. You will find purpose. Remember what I said, that God designed us from the beginning, long time ago, that we, that you and I will serve. And the moment you discover that you are meant for this, it will change your life. Amen? It will change your perspective. It will probably change your health, your lifestyle, and many more. Okay? Mark 8.35 says, Only those who throw away their lives for my sake and the sake of the good news will ever know what it means to really live. Imagine. Many people do not know how to live. This is why those people, we encourage you to join our life class. Okay? I don't pity uh, those people that serve too much. Okay? They say that, you know, we hear people that says, Oh, you do too much for the church. I don't pity them. Yeah? Because I know a lot of them and they are the people who are most alive. Because they are doing everything they can for God. And if you are not serving, you are not living. You are just existing. And that's shameful. That's hurtful to say that, oh, I'm just existing. Yes, you are. Because remember, the, plans and, uh, the plan of God in your life is for your life to be of use in service. That you must bear fruit. Okay? Fruit that will last. Amen? That's why we want to see people getting out of this church potato syndrome and become involved in the ministry of Jesus Christ, in the mission of Jesus Christ, in the global conquest of winning souls and making disciples. Okay? Only those who are throwing their lives away for my sake of the good news will ever know what it really means to live. Okay? So if you think that you're you don't know what is life, you don't know if you're living, then I encourage you to serve. Okay? It makes life meaningful. Once you see lives being changed because of your service, it will change you. And lastly, number seven, your service. Okay? Uh, your service for God will be credited for eternity. Okay? I know this is not... Uh, meant to be our motivation but in John 12 26 Jesus said that my father will honor the ones who serve me okay this is why I said earlier when you serve God you obey God there is inevitable honor inevitable blessing and inevitable promotion that will happen in your life okay in Matthew 25 21 says he says well done, good and faithful servants. You have been faithful in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. So, you know, this life is just a test, okay? Maybe some of you can relate because you have been tested so many times, you know, COVID, yeah. Some of you, you know, think that this life is just a test. It is. Because what we are doing now is just a probation, okay? We are just being tested and God is seeing what kind of faithfulness we have. We're going to spend far more time in eternity than what we have now here. The question is, what are you doing here? What significance, what legacy are you living now here? One day, you know, when, when you die, yeah, what did you leave? What are you living? Okay? How you spend your time here is going to determine what's going on to be done with you in the next life of eternity. Okay? Jesus said, you have been faithful in little things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. And, you know, it is probably the greatest motivation in life that you are able to serve God and others and gave pleasure to Him. So, in my conclusion, the 8C. <laughs> Our service to the Lord should produce results. Amen? Tell the person next to you, Our service to the Lord should produce results. Okay? In other words, you must produce fruits, fruits that will last. 
in John 15 verse 8 in NIV says that this is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples John 15 verse 16 says you did not choose me but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit fruit that will last okay and so whatever you ask in my my name the father will give you so let me quickly explain if you have a ministry right now if you are part of a ministry you're the one who picks up the rubbish on the floor because you have been doing it faithfully yeah you are picking up rubbish or sweet wrappers every Sunday one day God will promote you amen he's a God of promotion he promotes you to bigger things bigger responsibilities and of course when you are promoted you cannot just abandon your position amen L listen to this very carefully again when you are in the ministry you cannot simply abandon your position when you get promoted why because you will need someone to replace you amen it means that your fruit of service is also bearing fruit of service don't simply abandon your post amen and that my friend is called discipleship you being a fruit of service will also bear fruit of service that will last we serve people through servant leadership we want to be fruitful this year okay it is one of the goals of pastor doc that's why we want to go through the three waves of life class this year okay we have to get rid of those church potato syndrome and the ingredients are already laid out for us they are there just go back to them revise them master them and most of all literally do something about it amen for a challenge we will go through life class once again and this is your opportunity to serve bless show kindness to these people i know you have people right now in your mind in your heart that you want to, you know to bring to the kingdom of god and for you to be able to do that they must see something first your face of service amen so that's it for this afternoon i will lead you to prayer amen so let's bow our heads and let's pray hallelujah hallelujah heavenly father we thank you for your word lord thank you for reminding us that we have work to do thank you lord for the assignments that you have given us thank you lord for the responsibility that you have given us as your children lord in the name of jesus i pray that you remove the church potato syndrome that is developing in our lives the familiarity the neutrality and normalcy lord and lord right now we pray that we will live from this day forward serving you lord today allow us to get out from our couches from our comfort zones lord god that lord we will be able to bring greater glory for your kingdom we make you famous lord jesus and lord holy spirit we ask that you convict us to do that you ask us to do Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to serve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God and thank you for listening.